Hello, I'm Greg Stevens. Let me say it the way Brother Cooper would. I'm Professor Greg Stevens, and welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Come on, welcome. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right, I've had the privilege of being with Brother Copeland on several Believer's Voice of Victory broadcasts, teaching on our covenant with God. And recently, he asked me to begin our next series and teach you the word for the two weeks, uh, this week and next week, on covenant partnership. Before you say, I know everything there is to know about covenant, maybe you don't, because I learned some things in studying for this. So yes, Brother Copeland, uh, here I am, and I'm honored to do this. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We ask you to wash us in your word today, reveal yourself to us in a way that we may never have seen you before, that we'll be changed and transformed from glory to glory into the very image of you. We thank you for that. Uh, we thank, yeah, to the image of you for a lost and dying, darkened world. Let our light shine today before men. We thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. All right, Brother Copeland talked to us about partnerships in a clip that we played yesterday about teamwork. And we talked about what partners were. We, we, the uh, koinonia in Greek, to share with something in something. And that God designed partnership for all of us, that we weren't to be alone, we were to work together. And I wanna show you one now, I'm gonna pick up on David over in 1 Samuel, and let's go to chapter 17, very familiar, uh, very familiar uh, scripture to everybody. And I showed you this, that I told you this last time that partnerships break down. They break down when we don't share the same goal. The moment we begin to not share the same goal, partnership breaks down. I'll say it this way. The moment you don't share the same goal any longer in a revival, the revival will break down. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go to 1 Samuel 17. And uh, this is... Uh, the battle with the Philistines and Goliath. Let's look at verse 17. And Jesse, that's David's father, Jesse said unto David, his son, take now for thy brethren an ephath of this parched corn and these 10 loaves and run to the camp to thy brethren and carry these 10 cheeses unto the captain of the thousand and look how the brethren fare and take their pledge. Now Saul and they, and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning, left the sheep with a keeper, and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to fight and shouting for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines and spake according to some words, and David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy... Israel, he came up, and it shall be that the man who killeth the king will enrich him with great riches, and I'll make, I'll give him his daughter, make his father's house free in Israel. That means no taxes. Never gonna pay taxes again. There's some incentive. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, what shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Now that's covenant talk. Covenant speaking here. That he should defy the armies of the living God. And the people answered him after this manner, saying, so shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab, the eldest brother, heard when he spoke unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. This is David's oldest brother. And he said, why comest thou hither? And with whom hast thou left the few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the haughtiness, naughtiness of thy heart, for thou art come down that thou might see the battle. Now, his own he brings food to his brothers, gets a care package. I remember being in the military in the war, and there was nothing better than when somebody would send you one of those care packages. You'd get, even if it wasn't one from your family. I remember my grandmother sent me a whole bunch of cookies and they were broken up into little bits and we ate every crumb of them. <laughs> we were so happy to have them. 
I was stationed though, on the reverse of that, I was stationed with some guys from Minnesota, mm -hmm. Minnesota. And uh, they were sent some fish called Ludf Ludfisk or Ludfisk or something. Never mail that. <laughs> I'm just, they opened that. You didn't even have to open that box. You knew, ooh, there's something wrong with this box. And they wanted to share that and I said, pass me on by, thank you very much. So he brings this down, but his brother said, who's watching that little bitty flock you watch? Why are you up here? Why are you doing this? Your own family, his own family's against him here. Now what I say, what happens with partnership when you don't share the same goal? Right. Okay, now look at this. David, now here's what I want you to, here's what I want you to notice in verse 29. David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? Pay attention to those words. Focus on that statement. Is there not a cause? Now that Hebrew word there can also be translated for word. So David could say, is there not a word? Do we not have a word of the Lord on this? Because he had already said the word. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He's speaking covenant. Do we not have a word from the Lord concerning this battle? Do we not have a word from the Lord concerning the Philistines? Do we not have a word from the Lord that we're to inhabit all the land? Mm -hmm. David's trying to remind him of covenant and his brother gets mad at him. Why aren't you here? Why aren't you back there watching that little bitty, that little bitty flock you have, that little bitty church? Did you just leave them out there? No, you saw a while ago that David is a man of honor. He's a shepherd. He left them with a keeper. He didn't just run off and leave them. He left them with somebody. So here's the deal. They've been in a standoff for 40 days on two sides of a valley, shouting at each other. And Jesse sends bread and some corn and some cheese. Now the cheese goes to their officer. But Jesse, now what, what did he just do there? Jesse became a partner. Because he didn't just give that to his sons, he gave that to the commanding officer that's over them as well. Mm -hmm. He partnered with Israel that day. Mm -hmm. He partnered with the army that day. See what he's doing? Mm -hmm. By sending his own littlest son up there. The man who kills him will get money, live tax-free, marry the king's daughter, and David's old brother got mad and says he's full of pride. Sometimes, listen to me now, sometimes when you make a covenant stand, Sometimes when you make a faith stand, sometimes when you speak something boldly based upon your covenant, people are gonna think you're in pride. Well, who did they think they are? Right. Who does she think she is? Who does he think he is? No, it's not pride, it's covenant. It's not speaking about me, it's speaking about him. Amen. It's bragging on his faithfulness, on his honor, on his power. The man who kills him will get money, live tax-free, marry the king's daughter, and he got mad at him. David's not concerned with the wealth or fame, but he's concerned about the honor of God yeah. and his name. The Philistines had invaded and set up camp in their land, their squatters to Judah's inheritance. This is happening in the tribe of Judah. This is David's own tribe. This is his own land. The future of the entire nation even David's destiny hinges on their ability to defeat and drive out this enemy. What Jesse did not know is that by sending this, this bread and this cheese and sending what he sent, he is setting the stage for David's destiny. This is not just a battle with Goliath. I carry in my pocket, I carry this all the time with me, Every now and then when stuff gets a little tough, I got this little stone with me. And it says, the David stone. And on the other side, nothing is too big for God in your hands. Amen. And I just, it, when, when stuff hits, I'll just, people see me do it before, I'll just reach into my jacket, feel that little stone right there, and realize that's all I need. They tried to put the battle armor of Saul and everything on David. He couldn't wear it, he'd never tried it, but he knew how to use this thing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And what he, God will use whatever's in your hand. Amen. With Moses and Aaron, 
What do you have? He goes, I have a stick. I'll use the stick. Let's use the stick. Mm -hmm. He'll use whatever you already have in your hand. Yes. You already have gifts and talents and abilities that God will use to partner with him to do amazing, amazing and mighty things on the earth. So David has just partnered and Jesse has just partnered. And the future, David's destiny hinges on their ability to defeat this enemy. And he says, is there not a cause? Now, that's an indictment on his brother's fear. Don't you remember when they went into the land and the spies said there are giants in that land? Were grasshoppers in their sight? Well, they're living it out right here. They're living out that negative partnership. That was a partnership, wasn't it? Moses sends 12 people in there. 10 of them partnered together negatively and two of them partnered together. Joshua and Caleb said, we can take it. And got Joshua and Caleb did take it. They did go into the land, didn't they? You gotta watch who you're gonna partner with. That just rose up into me by the Holy Ghost. You gotta watch who you're gonna partner with. There are many examples of partnership gone wrong. Samson and Delilah would be one, wouldn't it? Well, I said, wouldn't it? He's a judge of Israel, but he partnered with the wrong woman. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, Balaam is another example of partnership gone wrong. He partnered with the enemy of Israel, cost him. So we've got to watch who you partner with. Listen to me, I want to tell you this. Um, is there not a cause? So that's an indictment of his brother's fear. It's an indictment of lack of faith, wrong motive, being passive, passivity, you know, just being, being scared of everything. But we worried all the time. My, we, our family were champion warriors before the word of faith came into our, into our house. I mean, they worried about worrying. <laughs> they couldn't make a decision about anything. It was, it was the most unusual thing to watch. Where do you want to go eat? I don't know. Where do you want to go? I don't care. And, and they do this all the time. We would drive 15 minutes talking about where we wanted to go and nobody could make a decision. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Owe me something. And they do that. And then I realized later on, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So I had to get rid of that. I had to get rid of that in my from my family being passed down to me. No, I can make a decision. We're going here. Amen. Amen, well, amen owe me something. <laughs> Many today want change, even freedom in their lives, but they're unwilling to courageously go. You have to go. David went at Jesse's command. He partnered. Change is inevitable. Everything changes. Growth is optional. I have to choose to grow. I have to choose to do that. The cause was the advancement of God's kingdom when he said, is there not a cause? His purpose for Israel. David's older brothers, the nation, even King Saul couldn't see God's purpose. They'd been, they'll be there another 40 days staring at each other, listening to this guy come out and curse them. They were called, as Israel was called in Exodus 19, to be a kingdom of priests. You can find that, Exodus 19, verse 4, and verse, six, verse 4, 5, and 6. They were called to be kingdoms, of, well, let me just show you. Exodus Nineteen and verse four. You've seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and I how how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. This is when he, they brought him to the mountain. He didn't say bring him to the mountain. He said bring him to me. Moses brings him to himself. Now, therefore, if you will keep, if you will obey my voice, indeed, keep my covenant. Question: What covenant is that? Laughing by no, what covenant is God offering them after he brought them out of Egypt? That would be the covenant of Abraham. Covenant of Moses hadn't been established yet. It's the covenant of Abraham, which is a covenant of faith and partnership. Abraham believed God, walked in faith. Justice, uh, justification by faith, not by works. You see what I did to the Egyptians, how I bore you on the eagle's wings and brought you unto myself. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice and indeed keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all the people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be unto me a kingdom, look at this, of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. 
Now they, they backed away from that. They go, oh, we don't want that. Moses, you go talk to God. You have a relationship with him and not me. That's, when, that's why the law came. And the law worked that way. You were separated now from God. Only the priest could go into the Holy of Holies. Only the priest could speak to God face to face. Now in our new covenant, that's been reversed. Amen. Amen. Through Jesus, and now we have access to boldly go to the throne, just like it was with Abraham, just like it was with Adam. All right, so we want Moses to speak for us. Now David tapped into something that day, a pattern that will follow a descendant of his named Jesus. Jesus came and openly declared, there is a cause for this cause. Mm -hmm. Amen, you're with me now, aren't you? For this cause, he came. He is now, but that can't happen until David defeats Goliath. Can't happen until David becomes king. Can't happen until David uh, has all his offspring because the, the promised one has to come through David, mm -hmm. through Abraham. Mm -hmm. And so this little partnership of take the boys that are up the front, take them some food. That's what started the whole thing with David walking into his destiny. How many times, and I, I wanted to ask the Lord this and I thought, no, I don't want the answer to it. How many times have I had an instruction, do this or do that? Something simple, buy that person's lunch. Um, um, give in this offering. Buy that minister, buy, or buy that person in the church this. I want you to give that to them. Just something simple. Bring them a sack of groceries. That's all David was doing. Take this lunch up to the front to your brothers and give this to the officer that's in charge of them. What we don't realize is that one little thing, that one little thing will set the destiny for David because it'll be during that day, that's when David will kill Goliath. He'll come running at him with a shout, speaking covenant words. They're gonna try to dress him up as a soldier. Goliath will mock him. But he didn't go there to kill Goliath. He's delivering bread and cheese. That's all he's doing. So I want to ask you again, how many times has God told you some little simple something to do? It's just a little simple partnership moment. David didn't even realize it was a partnership moment, did he? I don't even know that Jesse realized it was a partnership moment. But that little gift changed everything. It made him a king leaving the sheep with somebody else, taking bread and cheese and corn to his brothers, made him a king and a champion. After that moment, they will say David, or Saul has killed his thousands, David has killed his tens of thousands. David will come on the world stage by a simple act of partnership that his daddy put him up to. Mm. Now, how many times, see, you never thought of that as partnership, had you? When I looked at that, I'd never thought of that as partnership. You're gonna see that same thing play out, and we'll talk about it on another one of these broadcasts, with Jesus, when a little boy brings his happy meal that his mother made him exactly. to a church service, and he's sitting there, and Jesus will ask them, what do we have to feed these people? And uh, Andrew, I believe it was, will come over and say, well, there's this little boy here, he's got this, but it's not enough for everybody. But that little boy gave his lunch to Jesus. And what happened with it? We're talking about it today. One little, multiplication is part of partnership. One little, one little lunch that his mother made for him and we're talking about it today, mm -hmm. fed thousands and thousands. Mm -hmm. And there was enough left over, 12 baskets of it were left over. That's the way God does things. He multiplies, he never divides, he multiplies. He it's always addition. But he didn't realize, I don't think he left that morning saying, mother dear, make me a lunch 
so that I can take it and feed all of Israel. You think he did that? I don't think he did. I don't think she had that thought in her mind. He's going to this thing. Let me give him this so he can go out and have something to eat when he comes home. But that one little act of partnership, Jesse, I doubt Jesse ever thought about what's going to happen today. David had already been anointed king, but he'll come back a conquering king after he takes a little bit of food to his brothers because Jesse said, do it. Whatever he tells you to do. Mary gave us the key to this with Jesus. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Even Jesus, she enlisted partnership right then of the servants. Can you see that? They weren't, they weren't partners with him. They're just working the wedding, right? They're the wedding planners. They're the people that are making sure the, the DJ's going and all this stuff's happening, right? They're just doing the thing they're doing. Make sure nobody knocks the cake over. You know, They're just doing the wedding. But then all of a sudden, Mary, the mother of Jesus says, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Because we're out of wine. They're trying to figure out what to do. And Jesus even said to his mom, it's not, it's not time for that yet. And yet they went and got the, the, he said, well, go get the water pitchers. They were purification pitchers of what they were. Go get them, bring them here. And they filled them with water. And when they went past him, they blushed. The, the, the pitchers blushed, turned into wine, turned the water into wine. Based on what? A partnership for the wedding. Mary now instituted the partnership. It's gonna change everything. That becomes the very first miracle, Jesus, and it happened how? By partnership. By Mary and the servants. And she enlisted Jesus into it. I'm telling you, everything in this book is covenant and it's partnership. It was able to get done. The, the feast, the wedding feast went off. David becomes king. He ends up with Saul's uh, daughter. It, uh, all of the stuff that his brother tried to put him down from, his brother tried to talk him out of it. Mm -hmm. Partnership with, with uh, Caleb and Joshua. Mm -hmm. When they saw the other, everybody else's hearts melted but theirs mm -hmm. because they decided we're gonna partner together. Mm -hmm. Where two agree is touching anything it shall be done of my Father in heaven. One act of partnership by Jesse changes a nation. Amen. That one act puts David on the scene. That one act makes it possible for Ruth and Boaz. Mm -hmm. That one act makes it possible for King Solomon and the temple. That one act, take it all the way down, makes it possible for Mary and Joseph to get married to leave Nazareth, to go to Bethlehem, for him to be, buried, to be born in the shepherd's fields in the tower where the shepherds who watch over the sheep made all of this possible for the son of David to come into the world. And he made it possible for him to walk on water, made it possible for him to heal the sick. Made it, that one little partner lunch made it possible for Jesus to die for your and I's sins. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Let's praise him. Don't go away. Back in just a moment. Glory to God. Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. For there the Lord commanded the blessing. Get the Power of Covenant and Partnership Package, a book called God, the Covenant, and the Contradiction by Kenneth Copeland and Greg Stevens, and a mini book by Kenneth Copeland called Partnership and Power, Making the Connection, and learn about this God-ordained source of blessing and power. Through covenant in Jesus, everything He has is yours. In the same way, when believers partner together, we share in each other's giftings. From marriage and family to business to ministry, learn to receive by faith the blessing and anointing that comes through covenant partnership. Dive into these special resources and begin receiving those benefits today. Order the Power of Covenant and Partnership Package for only 16 pounds and 50 pence. Outside the UK, call for postage. Go to kcm.org.uk forward slash TV special. Contact your regional office today. I'm George Pearsons. I'm pastor of Eagle Mountain International Church, CEO of Kenneth Copeland Ministries, and a longtime partner with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. That partnership is so important to me and to my wife.
As partners, we've been partakers of the grace that has been upon Kenneth and Gloria, the anointing upon them. And it's been really interesting through the years as we walk together in the Word of God, we've seen the power of partnership work on our behalf. Now, another great thing about partnership is that we are connected to everything that Kenneth Copeland Ministries is doing around the world, whether it's through KCM or Eagle Mountain International Church, KCBC, or the Victory Channel, or any of our global offices. We know that as a partner, we're reaching out with our finances, we're reaching out with our prayers, and people's lives are being changed. I think that's the most important part about that, knowing that people's lives all over the world are being changed by the Word of God, taking people from the milk of the Word to the meat, from religion to reality, and people knowing who they are in Christ. I want to invite you today to become a partner with us in this tremendous work that's taking place. Become a team member and just know that this is a two-way street. We pray for you, you pray for us, and together, we are reaching the world with the Word of God. Go to kcm.org.uk slash partnership to become a partner with Kenneth Copeland Ministries and we know that it's going to change your life. It will change ours. Take the Word of Faith wherever you go with the Believer's Voice of Victory magazine. Build your faith through powerful articles from Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and other guest authors. Read encouraging stories and testimonies of real life victory and equip your kids for spiritual growth in Commander Kelly's Corner. Download a digital copy for your tablet or mobile device. Sign up for your free monthly subscription or download your copy today on our KCM website. Partners, I want to say thank you for your faithful giving support. Do you realize that David's lunch David's lunch will heal lepers. David's lunch will cause somebody to walk on water with Jesus. David's lunch will cause that little boy to feed 5,000. Your partnership gift continues to go for generations after generation. Together, when it being able to send this uncompromised word of faith from the top of the world to the bottom and all the way around the middle to every available voice. And one of those available voices is print media. Believer's Voice of Victory magazine was first printed in 1973. And today, this free monthly publication continues to deliver the Word of God to families everywhere, transforming lives across the globe. And each month, you can find faith-filled articles from Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, as well as testimonies and victory stories from our partners all around the world. The content of the magazine uh, is also available on our website, kcm.org. Know this, God loves you, and we love you, and Jesus is Lord. We'll see you tomorrow. Amen. Let the Word of God build your faith. Kenneth Copeland calls kcm.org.uk your study center. You can watch, read, and share faith-based content and teaching resources available to you free.